Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is our second video in our geometry playlist in which we are explaining the EGMO or the Euclidean geometry for Math Olympiad uh, book by Evan Chen. Uh, in the previous video, we started with the angle chasing chapter, the first chapter about angle chasing. We discussed basically the theory uh, in that chapter. And in this video, we'll be solving some problems so we'll be discussing the examples mentioned in the book and we're also going to uh, be uh, like discussing other examples that are not uh, in the discussed examples in the book uh, most of the problems that we'll be discussing are actually uh, like mentioned in the book but uh, in the problems as well so in the exercises as well we'll be covering some of these problems that in my opinion are really important and uh, they are really uh, like uh, cover a variety of ideas that appear in the math contests. All right, so what are you think for my dear friends? Let's get started. So our first example is uh, a pretty simple one. Let's say it's a warm up question. So as you can see, we have uh, a quadrilateral w x y z in the diagram here and you can see that the diagonals are perpendicular we have uh, we're given some angles as you can see this angle here is 40 this angle here is 30 this angle here is 50 and we're asked to simply find the angle z and to find the angle x okay so this is uh, like a very simple question our first thing that we should do is of course do some angle chasing so let's start immediately with that so we have here a 90 degree, we have here 40. So for example, we can find easily that this is 50. Same thing here, we have like the 90 here, we have the 30 here. So this angle here is 60. We have here like a 90 degree, we have 50. So we can find this is 40. Yeah, so pretty much these are all the angles that we can uh, find in the angle chasing, with the, the quick angle chasing. And now, of course, if we just look at the question, the first question is asking us find Z. Well, guess what? We already found Z. Clearly, it's just 30 plus 40. So that means uh, Z is just 70. All right, very good. Uh, next question, find X. All right, if we want to find X, we already have this part. So we need to find this part. Mm, but unfortunately, like this part, we cannot really uh, find it because we don't know this thing here. So like just uh, simple angle tracing will not give us a solution here. But right now, uh, if you look here, you should notice something nice. For example, look here, this is 40, this is 40. You can also notice that this is 50, this is 50. And if you remember uh, this thing, when we see like two angles sharing the same side and they have the equal angles, then automatically we have a cyclic quadrilateral. So that means that we have just proven that W, X, Y, Z is cyclic. And if it is cyclic, then now, of course, we can easily uh, compute what we want. So for example, we want to find x. Remember that x plus z is equal to 180. So automatically x is just 180 minus z. That is uh, 110. And that's it. We are done. So the main uh, catch here is uh, you should always look for cyclic quadrilaterals. You should not miss when you see cyclic quadrilaterals because cyclic quadrilaterals give you uh, like, uh, angle ch like angles that you cannot find just by simple angle chasing. Like if you combine cyclic quadrilaterals with the simple angle chasing, then uh, you can really uh, find powerful results. All right, now let's move on to our uh, second example. Our second example is the following. We have a triangle ABC and uh, we have a circumcenter O. We take a point K such that KA is tangent to the circle. So as you can see here, we have the triangle ABC, O is the circumcenter. And K, uh, we have this guy here is tangent. And uh, we also have KCB is 90. So we have this angle here is 90. So we choose point K such that it satisfies both of these. This is 90 and this is tangent KA. Next, we choose a point D on uh, line BC such that KD is parallel to AB. So that just means that this thing here is parallel to this. This is how we choose point D. And now we're asked to show that DO passes through, through A. So that means we need to show this is one line, DO and A are just collinear. All right, let's first of all uh, put the stuff they gave us on the diagram. 
So first of all, we have a 90 degree here. Now we have also that this is parallel to this. Uh, we know that this guy here is tangent, like Ka. Okay, uh, if you think about it, what do we know about tangents? How can we turn that into some angles? Well, we know two things about tangents. The first thing is about angles. Automatically, whenever you see a tangent, then automatically you should uh, remember that this angle here uh, is the like the same as this arc, or actually half of the measurement of the arc. But usually, like when whenever you uh, like hear me saying that uh, this thing is the arc, then automatically I mean the circumscribed angle, because this is usually the the thing we deal with in Math Olympiad. We don't really usually find you know the angle of the arc itself. Okay, so this angle is automatically equal to this so it's actually b so like uh, automatically when they told you that this is tangent then automatically you can say, uh, say that this is b and, and now we have the parallelity of course the parallel parallelity it automatically gives you uh, angles that are equal so here what are the simplest angles that you can immediately get clearly you can see that uh, this angle is also b as well here because this, these two are equal all right, very good. And now our question is asking us show that D, O, and A are uh, collinear. Uh, before actually we uh, move here, I want to, uh, I want to stress a very important thing. That is, uh, you should always have a nice diagram. The diagram is of course the first thing you're going to do whenever uh, you solve any geometry question. And uh, really, the like the diagram, you you drawing you. The diagram is really a crucial step in solving the question. In fact, sometimes it's the crucial uh, kind of decision, let's say, that uh, will decide either you're going to solve the question or not. Because in some questions, some hard qu uh, hard questions, you're going uh, to, to catch some stuff on your diagram. Like you will notice something on your diagram if your diagram was accurate. You will never uh, catch it otherwise. If your diagram was something like that, you will never, for example, see a perpendicularity or maybe a parallelity or maybe even three points are collinear. Like, uh, and of course, automatically your mind will not catch that. Let's say like in your diagram, you have something like this, this, let's say this. And uh, like the, the, let's say that the solution uses the idea that these points are collinear. Well, guess what? It's impossible for you to find out that these are collinear when you have a bad diagram. However, of course, if your diagram is good and like you were just looking at, you notice, wait a minute, this seems collinear, then automatically this will guide you towards the solution. So really having a good diagram and spending some time uh, to draw a good diagram is really a crucial step. Uh, unfortunately, here I have a tablet, so I cannot really uh, show you the process of drawing the diagram. Of course, uh, you should use your ruler and the protractor as well. Oh, sorry, I mean my, your compass. Uh, protractor is uh, not allowed in, uh, in Math Olympiad contests. So you cannot actually find the, the angles, measure the angles. So you just can use your ruler and compass. Uh, anyway, uh, so instead I'm going to try to explain to you how we draw this diagram. So as you can see here, we have a, like a good diagram that is drawn, of course, using some uh, computer programs. Uh, but I'm going to try to explain how we get something like that using just our pen and like uh, as we said the, our geometry tools so first of all uh, the first thing that you should always do is draw a small diagram like don't immediately uh, spend too much time uh, on on the actual diagram that you're going to to do first of all you should just draw like kind of a small diagram let's say on your draft of course you're working uh, like a very quick and small diagram just to see what what is your diagram kind of What's the shape of it? Uh, what? Where are your points? The, why? Why am I saying this? Because you might spend tons of time drawing like the, the actual good diagram, and then you, like in your diagram, they to, they tell you that let's say you have some points like this, and you have this, and they are telling you that we need to intersect these two lines, and now come on, like you, if you just want to intersect these, they will be out of your page. So this is of course bad. However, if you do that on your like small diagram, let's say you got something like this, then you automatically say, oh, I see. So I should actually try to make this, for example, 
uh, more like uh, down, right? I should not make them parallel. So uh, that means, of course, you will save uh, tons of time by just doing that. So uh, it's always a good idea to start with uh, a small diagram. So for example, here they're just giving you a triangle uh, ABC. Well, you can just draw a triangle ABC. They're giving you a circumcircle. You can just draw it. You have point O here. They give you a tangent. They give you a 90 degree there. Like this. And now you have your point K. Now they just told you we take the parallel there. You have your point D. And now you see that the whole question is just this. So it's actually simple. You can draw this one easily. Now you move on to your original diagram, the big one, the accurate one, and you draw it. Of course, how do you uh, draw such a diagram? Uh, like one rule of thumb is always try to start with circles, right? Because uh, it's very hard to draw circles uh, when you when you have your points. However, however, when you uh, like the, when you start with the circle, it's really easy. So you just take and draw a random circle using your compass. So you simply draw the circle and then you put the points A, B, C on it. And uh, you have now your circumcircle and you have your point O, of course, as well. Uh, and now it's uh, easy. Now, how are you going to find K? Well, you just take a 90 degree from here, use your ruler and draw this line. And you also uh, take a tangent. So you can draw, for example, OA and take a 90 degree on it. Because remember that the tangents have this property that OA uh, is uh, perpendicular to KK. So now you have found your point K. Now you simply just draw a parallel to, to AB through K. So you get your point D. And now like you have a very accurate diagram that's really similar to this one that we have already here. All right. So now we have this good diagram. Uh, we can, of course, start working on it. And now, uh, as we just uh, mentioned, we have this angle is P. This angle is B because of the tangency. Uh, we also have this angle is B because of the parallelity. And now... Uh, like remember, the question is asked to find uh, that A, O, and D are proof that they are collinear. Now here is a very important thing. As you can see here, we have a dotted, dotted line. This, this is really, really important. And uh, like many beginners make this kind of mistake a lot when they start working with geometry questions. And that mistake is they do something like this. They draw this segment. And then they, they try to... Uh, Prove that A, O, D, uh, like this is basically one line. And uh, the problem is, when you're drawing it like this, then your mind will automatically assume they are collinear. So let's say, okay, you're maybe doing something like this. You're trying to, uh, let's say, maybe calculating this angle. So you might accidentally say that this angle, like is X, is 180. This one is 180 minus X your mind will automatically assume that. And if you, of course, do, do that, then guess what? You're just doing a circular proof. You're assuming they're collinear, and then you're showing they're collinear. So you will get zero. And, and this is, like, really bad. You don't really want to, to do this. And unfortunately, lots of students do it. So uh, in my opinion, the best way to do it, uh, like, to avoid this mistake, is simply to make a dotted line. When you have a dotted line, then automatically you, you will be always alert that these uh, here are not really collinear. So you should always be alert. Uh, like this is kind of a rule of thumb. Always when you have something like collinear, try to make them uh, a dotted line if you don't have their collinear yet. All right. Uh, with that done, now let's uh, jump again to our problem. So here, how can we uh, find that D, O, A are collinear? How can we prove that? Well, since we have uh, this line D, O, and A, and we already have a tangent Ka, you should immediately remember that uh, we have something nice about uh, tangents. In fact, we already mentioned it when we wanted to draw our diagram. Uh, and that is OA is 90. Remember, OA is 90. So that means OA is 90. Remember, it's not like D, DA. So if you, if you said that DA is 90, then you're done actually. In fact, that means that if we can just show that line DA is perpendicular, then we'll be done. So if we now can just think, just show that DAK is 90, then uh, we'll be done. And uh, now if you look at it, 
if you want to show that this thing is 90, then what does that really mean? Try to just look at your diagram. Do you see something nice? Well, clearly this is 90, this is 90. So that means you just need to show that this A, K, C, D is cyclic. If you show that, then we'll, we'll be done. So of course, this is what you need to do. Let's put a question mark on that. And of course, like if you're working with a question, then uh, right now, uh, you can kind of delete point O because of the same thing we said before. Uh, you can just erase it, uh, for example, if you're using a pencil, uh, just uh, to, to make sure that you don't make that mistake of uh, assuming that it's on, on that line. Anyway, right now, uh, how can we show that this, this thing is cyclic? Well, <laughs> actually, it's really easy right now. Again, if you just look at it, you can easily see that uh, we have two angles that are B. This one is B, this one is B, and they both have the same uh, segment KC. So that automatically means that it is indeed cyclic and that immediately finishes the proof. So now how can you like state um, like the solution? You can simply just say that uh, from the parallelity you have this is B and this is B. From the, tan from the tangency you have this is B, that this is B. Uh, then that means that uh, this thing is cyclic and automatically because it's cyclic, then that means that DA uh, K is 90, but we already know that OAK is 90, so that just means that DOA are collinear because they both uh, lie on the line uh, perpendicular to AK uh, through A. And we're done, that's it. So the main point here was um, actually we just did some angle chasing, simple angle chasing. We just expressed everything that they gave us, especially you know the tangency. And uh, notice that uh, cyclic quadrilaterals are really uh, important when doing angle chasing. All right, so our third example for today is the following question from the IMO shortlist 2010 G1. So we're given here a triangle ABC, an acute triangle, and we have the orthic triangle, which is DEF, the feet of the LT, three altitudes. And uh, then we're going to extend EF to hit the circumcircle at P. And automatically you can see here that you have actually uh, two such cases. So here we just have the triangle ABC, we have the orthic triangle E, F, and D, and you can see that E, F, if you extend it, it's going to hit it uh, twice. So they're going to pick one of them, uh, P. Then we're going to extend line B, P, and D, F to meet at point Q. So let's say we pick this point here as P, so we're just going to extend B, P with uh, D, F, they're going to meet at Q. And then we just need to show that AP equals AQ. So these two are equal, like an isosceles triangle. All right, again, uh, first step, we need to draw the diagram. As I always uh, tell you, first of all, try to draw a small diagram on your draft, uh, just to make sure you, you understand where the points will lie. And uh, as we said, to avoid the case of getting a point outside your page. So after uh, you simply do that, and here, like, of course, it's very simple. You just draw like a triangle. You draw the three altitudes, like the three altitudes here, here, and here. And, you know, you, can, you just extend this to get P. And then you just extend this, for example, here and here. And you're going just to get uh, the point Q. So, like, our diagram is really simple. It's very easy to draw. Uh, the process is simple. You just draw a circumcircle with your compass. Uh, then you choose three points, A, B, C, on it. Uh, you draw it, then you draw the three altitudes easily using your ruler, and then uh, you extend uh, EF to hit the circle at P. Then you just intersect BP with DF at point Q, and you got yourself a very precise, accurate diagram. Okay, now we're ready to work with this question. Uh, by the way, uh, don't worry about having two points to work with because uh, the proof for both will be like kind of the same. In fact, if you just uh, solve it for one of them, uh, it's totally okay. Uh, so don't worry about that. So right now, let's focus here. Let's choose just the point P and point Q, this one. Forget about that uh, P1 here and Q1 here. Uh, okay. So to do this uh, question, first of all, uh, we, of course, need to do some angle chasing. And guess what? We've got the orthic triangle, which is the, like, really lovely triangle. We said that it's going to give us tons of cyclic quadrilaterals. So let's immediately start by doing some angle chasing. Okay, so of course we assume the triangle uh, angles are A, B, and C, 
and uh, depending on that we can easily see that this angle for example is b this angle is what c truly is equal to this okay not explain that again so i will quickly uh, put the angles that we can easily uh, find so what's this angle this angle clearly it's a what's this angle clearly c okay what can we also find what's this angle well here uh, remember that h is the in center of the orthic triangle so these two angles are equal so clearly that means that this is 90 minus c and 90 minus c okay right now we're just doing some angle chasing uh, okay of course this angle here is uh, like using the same idea 90 minus b same idea here 90 minus a all right i think like we're we've uh, like found everything uh, of course we still can uh, do more like for example uh, this one here is a Uh, and this one here is B. Of course, like this angle here is 180 minus C as well. Okay. So this is kind of uh, like enough. We have tons of the, like tons of angles. And this is really like cool. In fact, we can also, uh, since this angle is C, then this angle is also, we can calculate it. It's just C because they are equal. Okay. Very nice. Uh, right now, uh, let's... Uh, Remember, what is our question? So first of all, we need to, to show that AP is equal to AQ. So let's just join these two. AP and AQ. Alright, we need to show that this is isosceles, right? Let's put that in green. So we need to do that. So of course, our goal is to uh, like turn this into angles. So we just need to show that these two angles are equal. Let's see, can we calculate any of these angles? Well, uh, let's start with angle B because it's uh, like uh, Q is, is defined using B. So for sure, B is much simpler to work with. So if you want to find this angle, remember what's the definition of B? It makes, it gives us a square quadrature. So in fact, this is like direct. You can easily see that this angle is just equal to this angle. So it's in fact C. So very nice. This angle is just C. All right, and our goal that means is to show that this angle is C as well. So our goal is to show that this angle here is C. All right, very nice. Okay, now let's try to like have a look here. Of course, you can see that uh, you cannot really find this angle easily, this angle here. Um, there is really uh, not that much because uh, how was this point defined? It was defined as this segment, this line with this line. So it's difficult to find, you know, the whole angle. Maybe if you just need to find this, then maybe you can work that out. But this one really is kind of difficult. So let's right now try to have a look at our diagram and try to make some observations there. So I want you to look here and see what can you observe using the, the angles that we already have. Can you like have any info about point Q? Is there anything nice here? Well, Sure, there are lots of stuff that are nice. So, for example, if you look here, we have C. Oh, sorry. This one here is also C. So, what does that mean? Automatically, that gives us a cyclic quadrature. So, that means we have just shown that uh, A, F, P, Q is cyclic. All right, very nice. Remember, uh, our goal is to find this angle. So that means we are need to find this angle, which, or this angle in fact. So this angle is equal to this. <laughs> so guess what? We are done. Because this angle is C, so automatically this angle is C. And that's it. Like we are done, literally. So as you can see here, uh, like the, what, what was the main catch here? What we did was really simple. We just uh, did, did some angle chasing. Of course, uh, here comes the idea that I told you before. You really need to have all of uh, these centers of triangle all of these properties in your in your mind and uh, like geometry in general uh, the more theorems you have the more uh, stuff you know uh, the like the, the higher the probability that you're going to solve the problem 
So here, for example, immediately we, we were able to do this angle chasing. We were not really thinking about them. Like automatic, automatically, our hands were just working. So uh, once we put all of our angles there, uh, we saw that, of course, this angle is just C. And we just, our goal is to show this one is C. We, are, we immediately uh, noticed our cyclic quadrilateral and that automatically killed the problem. So the whole catch was just to notice that this guy here is just cyclic and it will be done. So again, like the, the main point is you really, really need to observe cyclic quadrilaterals. Don't miss them. Uh, in fact, can you also find another cyclic quadrilateral here in our diagram? Try to catch another cyclic quadrilateral. All right. Uh, it's this one here. Why? Well, notice this one is C. And remember, what's this angle? It's 180 minus C. So that means, uh, like, these two angles are opposite and they are supplementary. They add up 180. So we also have, uh, this one is cyclic. A, H, B, Q. All right, just, like, uh, keep that in mind. It's really not that helpful because, uh, like, it doesn't really... Uh, like gives you lots of nice stuff because it's connect point Q to H which is really not that cool at all in our question of course okay uh, yeah that's it we're done now that we finished the examples in the book and for the chapter uh, let's uh, walk through the problems real quick we will not of course uh, like do uh, do them uh, this should be for you like as your homework uh, but just like a quick uh, look at them. So the first uh, like few problems usually are easy. Okay. Uh, here, wherever, whenever you have a lemma, like a question that has a lemma in it, you should uh, definitely keep it in mind. So when, once you prove the lemma, then you should uh, like memorize uh, the, the diagram. For example, here, they're just telling you, you have triangle ABC, and you have the midpoints of the arcs. Remember, we call these the golden points. So the triangle formed by these golden points, if you draw it, and you have I, the end center, then I will represent, as you can see here, the orthocenter of XYZ is I. I is the orthocenter of XYZ. Uh, so this is like, you know, a good thing to keep in mind. That means a AX or AI is perpendicular over Z1. Okay, whenever like you have uh, such a lemma, you should always keep it in mind. Uh, you don't know when like a problem setter will use one of these lemmas to create some question. Uh, also, this one is really nice, three tangents. So if you have a triangle ABC and you have A, E, F, where E and F are the feet of the altitudes from B and C, then you should probably, uh, like you should definitely have uh, this circle in your mind, A, F, H, E, this circle has this line here from A parallel to BC as the tangent, and it has M, E, and M, F as also other tangents as well. So you should also memorize this. Okay, here you also have a nice lemma. When you, you have an n-circle, then you take this chord here, chord of an n-circle, and you take BI, the bisector, and you take MN, uh, MN is the midpoint segment, then they all meet at a point. In fact, this point uh, gives you a right a triangle here. CKB is 90 degrees. Uh, this one is really like a beautiful question. Try uh, like really uh, solve this one on your own. Okay, uh, right now uh, we'll be doing this problem. All right, so in this question, we have a point O inside a parallelogram ABCD. And we have this relation holds. We need to prove this one holds. So let's just draw a simple parallelogram. And we're going just to take a random point O inside it. So here is our parallelogram A, B, C, D, and this is the point O, this one, 
and uh, they are telling us that this angle plus this angle they sum up to 180 this is the condition uh, and what they want us to show is uh, OBC this angle here is equal to ODC that's this angle this is what we need to show and here you can think about this as they gave us this as X then this one is 180 minus X okay and of course this is you know a parallelogram okay so what exactly can we do in such a question mm, if we try to do some angle chasing here what can we do like uh, how can we use this condition that this plus this is 180 like this angle here uh, we don't know it's equal to anything because as you can see this uh, oh like they are not collinear here these are not collinear of course uh, you might like extend this hit it here it's going to be equal to this but this is really not that much helpful here like here we have really one struggle how exactly can we deal with this condition this is really a weird condition that this angle plus this angle is 180 if we don't find a way to use this condition we will never be able to solve the question so in these types of situations when you feel stuck and you don't really know how to use the, your condition your condition seems too random uh, in these types of situations uh, we usually try to do a construction here uh, how exactly like what should we construct what should we think of of course uh, like the construction that you're going to do is not really a magical thing it's not it's just going to be something logical that is going to help you in your question so you you should think like this how can i use this uh, like i have two angles that uh, add up to 180 like uh, this should remind us of two things either have something that like collinear like if you put this angle with this angle and then they'll be just uh, collinear right or the other thing that also reminds us of uh, like supplementary angles is to have a cyclic quadraturals because uh, like if you have two angles add up to 180 then we uh, this quadrilateral is cyclic so these two are a um, nice thing we should try to construct uh, using uh, like this this idea so here uh, like the collinearity thing how can we make these on the same line mm, for example like one one idea you might think of is if you extend this then this thing is x it's equal to this however like if you think about it like it's not really that much helpful if you have it here this one is x and this one is x it will not really give you uh, that much of benefits here so let's try to think about uh, the other idea the other idea was we want to uh, have a cyclic quadrilateral so that the opposite uh, angles add up to 180. Uh, what does this mean? That means we need to have this angle somewhere here. Like uh, we want to have this x here. If we have this x here, then we'll have automatically a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, but how exactly are we going to define this point? Let's call it T, for example. How are we going to define point T? So, so that uh, this angle is equal to this. Like there are tons of uh, like angles. In fact, any any angle on the, on this circle is going to to do the job. So let's try to use uh, something like the best the best choice. So here, if you just uh, look at it, then you know the easiest way to do it is that to pick uh, these two triangles to make them kind of the same. If you just move this triangle here and literally put it here then this is really going to be uh, a nice thing especially that of course in a parallelogram this side is equal to this side so yes you can do that so our definition will be really simple we will be take like we will take uh, like one parallel from a to this and another parallel from b to this uh, and uh, we will construct that point t so right now i'm going to draw the parallel there and I will take another parallel from there. All right. Let's define this as point T. This is parallel to this. 
and this is parallel to this and now automatically uh, this like angle is x so this is cyclic so now we have this uh, nice circle of course my diagram is not that cool right now okay uh, just like to remind you that this thing is uh, cyclic but of course don't look at the diagram right now uh, okay so uh, now what can we do now since we have this thing is cyclic remember our goal is to show this angle is equal to this angle so now did this uh, really help us in our question okay now uh, like we all agree that uh, we have really a nice thing that we have this thing is cyclic so let's see what what does it really tell us so right now uh, this angle that we had here let's uh, you know uh, make it as two here and this one keep it as one and we our goal is to show they're equal so this thing here automatically is equal to this very nice uh, but now if, because of we have a circle a cyclic quadrature let's try to use that so we should definitely join join this if we join this then automatically uh, we have this angle here is equal to this all right so now our goal uh, of course right now we show that this one is equal to this which is equal to this so now our goal is just to show that these two are equal that this one is equal to this so in fact you can easily see that uh, your goal is just to show that in fact this one is parallel if you can show that this one is parallel then you're done automatically uh, but if this one was parallel then clearly this shape here is a parallelogram so in fact we just need to show that this thing here is a parallelogram all right try to think how can we show that this thing is a parallelogram uh, well actually it's really obvious here how do we show uh, a quadrature is a parallelogram we have multiple of ways I either to use the definition which is to uh, to show that uh, like uh, all of the sides are like each opposite sides are parallel or uh, another way to do it is uh, to show like if you if you have two parallel uh, lines if you show that they are equal then uh, you're done so right now here which one like uh, is good if you look at this parallelogram or this quadrature uh, we already have a pair of parallel sides so if you just show that this one is equal to this then you're done but guess what clearly these two are equal because these two triangles are congruent this one here ATB and DOB are uh, congruent triangles uh, clearly uh, so uh, because they are congruent of course if you're asking why because uh, you know we can take ASA like this uh, this angle here this angle here and uh, like this S here this side so ASA gives us uh, congruent triangles then that means that this thing here is equal to this automatically that gives us the parallelity here parallelogram and so we're done okay so what was the point of this question the point was how exactly are you going to use this condition that two angles add up to 180 uh, the idea was to construct a point and as we saw constructions are like kind of magical that they really help you crack the question but they are not m like magical in the sense they are impossible to to think about no they are really uh, kind of logical so he said how are we going to use uh, this idea that they, they add up to 180 Either we need to have collinearity or cyclic quadrature. Collinearity is not that much helpful here. So we thought just about uh, moving this angle X above and having a cyclic quadrature. And uh, then we said that probably the best way is just to choose to move the triangle below above. And uh, now we of course have something really nice. Now the cyclic quadrature really helped us by just uh, moving this angle here to this angle here. And then everything followed. So uh, the, ma the main point is constructions uh, are really important when you feel stuck. Here we also have uh, another lemma that's really uh, important to keep in mind, with it, which is the Simpson line. That states if you have uh, any point on the, the circle, the circumcircle of triangle ABC, if you drop three, uh, like, like the feet of the uh, altitudes, let's say, uh, or projections from P to the sides, then there will be collinear. In fact, uh, this is an equivalency. So if you have a like a point, a random point P, and you know that like this, this, and this, the projections uh, are collinear, then automatically your point P is uh, 
uh, it lies on the circle on the circumcircle the triangle ABC this is like really important we will be we'll be discussing this more in chapter 4 okay uh, right now we'll be solving our last question uh, for today which is the last question also in the problems that is IMO 1985 problem 1 all right our last question is uh, we simply have a circle that has center on the side AB of the cyclic quadrilateral ABCD so we have a cyclic quadrilateral and we have a circle that has center uh, like on AB and the three other sides are tangent to the circle we need to show a relation that AD plus BC is equal to AB okay very good so right now we have two conditions we have the cyclic quadrilateral and we have uh, like this uh, circle here so let's start by drawing a diagram Let's draw a circle. Of course, to give you a quick uh, like look at your diagram here, we're going to have something like this. This thing it will be cyclic. And the furthermore, we'll be having like this circle, something like this. So it's going to have a center here, and it's going to be tangent to, the, to these three, as you can see here, uh, sides. So basically, this is actually kind of the, the most difficult thing to, to do, to draw the diagram. So let's try to focus on this circle. We're going to uh, like have the center somewhere here. Should be on the on that uh, side, AB. Uh, now, we will of course have a tangent here. let's say and then of course we'll extend this and uh, like draw another tangent let's say there I don't have a ruler so I'm going to suffer a lot okay and uh, can also do something like this here tangent okay now let's delete that yes yeah, so or something like this okay uh, of course our, our original one is also cyclic like uh, this quadrilateral is also cyclic here so we should also keep that in mind so right now we have a uh, sorry a is here a b c D. Uh, and let's call this point here O, the center of that circle. And don't forget that ABCD itself is cyclic. And right now, our, uh, like what we need to do is to show that this thing here, AD plus BC, if we add these two, we're going to just to get this AB. All right. So, uh, what exactly can we do right now? Let's try to think about this uh, circle, this weird circle that they mentioned in the question. So point O, is the center of this circle, point O, is going to uh, lie on AB. Furthermore, we know that it's tangent to the three sides. So automatically, uh, because it is tangent, like we have this thing is 90, and this thing is 90. So as you know, this thing is kite. This uh, is a kite. Uh, so that automatically means that uh, this thing CO is an angle bisector of C. Automatically that means that uh, because of course this thing is equal to this, then automatically uh, you have two congruent triangles and uh, you have its uh, it lies on the angle bisector. Uh, okay, very good. So that means we we know that this thing like is C over two and this thing is C over two. Uh, the same thing here. We drew this, we know this one is d over 2 and this one is d over 2. These two. Okay, very sweet. Now, what's the question? The question was asking us to show that AD plus BC is equal to AB. The thing is, how exactly are we going to add up like AD plus BC and get that it's AB? There is no like clear way to find like the length of AD, for example, and then add it to the length of BC and get like magically the length of AB. So how exactly are we going to prove this condition? Well, again here, 
comes the idea of a construction. You have a condition, a weird condition, which is this one here. How are you going to make it uh, more doable to work with? The idea of this construction uh, is really simple. I will simply, since like AB is equal to this plus this, I will simply take AB and put a point that gives us AD. Then automatically the other segment is, should be BC. So that means if I take a point here, let's say here, let's call it um, something like T, such that we know that AT is equal to DA. Then that means that we should prove that TB is equal to uh, TB, this thing here, should be equal to uh, CB. Like uh, that means something like this. Okay, now this thing is really a good idea because now we, we need to just try to work with point T, explore the stuff about, about uh, point T. So let's exactly do that. Let me draw this, DT. Let's try to do some angle chasing. First of all, uh, let's not forget to put what we've concluded. This is C over two. This is C over two. And don't forget that our uh, quadrature is cyclic. Okay. Uh, which simply means that uh, this thing, of course, is 180 uh, minus C. It's not just A. You should always uh, have in mind uh, when you have relations between angles. Okay, so this is 180 minus C. What can we also conclude? Remember, from our definition, the red and the red, they're equal. So what's this angle and this angle? Uh, this angle is just going to be uh, C over 2. And this one is C over 2. Okay, now what do you see? Do you see something nice? Try to look at our diagram. Now you should have spotted a cyclic quadrilateral right there, right? This is C over 2. This is C over 2. So we just got that TOCD is cyclic. This one is cyclic. All right, very nice. In fact, uh, right now if you look at this, uh, what we could have done is we could have defined uh, T uh, using another way. We could have said that uh, C, D, O, if you draw this circle, C, D, O here, if we intersect it with uh, the line AB at a point, let's call it T, now we're just going to show that this point T satisfies that uh, AT equals D, A, and similarly we're going to show that T, B is equal to uh, C, B. So if you define it using uh, this idea, of course, the same thing will apply. So let's uh, define it, assume we define it th that way. Automatically, you will get that this thing is C over 2. This thing here, C over 2. And we have, uh, like, uh, this one is, of course, we already have it that it's a cyclic quadrilateral. This is why we had this thing as C over 2. This is 180 minus C. So this is automatically C over 2. So automatically, we got that this thing is equal to this. And now, of course, uh, by kind of by symmetry, uh, you can uh, show that TB is equal to CB. Okay, let's not just say by symmetry. Uh, let's work it out. So if you want to do that, then clearly we need to uh, join this. Okay, now let's do a similar angle chasing here. So now here we have D over 2. And this thing is D over 2. This thing is 180 minus D. So this thing is, uh, because uh, like it's cyclic, we have that this thing here is uh, D over 2 as well. Uh, where is it? Here. Like this thing is D over 2. This thing is D over 2. Here. Uh, T, like O, T, C. So now uh, we got that this thing is 180 minus D. This thing is D over 2. So automatically this gives us that this thing is D over 2 as well. So automatically that gives us that indeed this is equal to this, BT is equal to CB, and uh, that's it, uh, we're done. We've just shown that uh, uh, point T is the point that gives us uh, like uh, these two are equal. So that means that AD plus CB is equal to AB. All right, so what's the, the point here? Again, uh, like we started with the question, we... Uh, like characterized point O, it lies on the angle bisectors of C and D, clearly. And then we said, how exactly are we going to show this weird thing, this weird relation? The main idea was to do a construction. How did we think about the construction? 
Uh, well, we simply uh, need to have AB as the sum of these two sides. So why not creating a point that uh, like satisfies one thing, that's AD equals B AT. Then we need to show that TB equals BC. We characterize this point T, we analyzed it, we saw that it's just the intersection of the circumcircle CDO with that uh, AB, with the AB. And automatically we just defined it using that and some simple angle tracing, some simple cyclic quadrilaterals will do the job. So the, the main point of the uh, of this question is uh, like about constructions. Constructions are really not impossible. You should always uh, try to think logically to find them. All right, so as a summary in this lesson, uh, we learned in the first video about uh, all the theory that we need. We learned about the centers of the triangle. We learned about the cyclic quadrilaterals, the angle chasing in general, how we do angle chasing. We learned about tangents and uh, all of this stuff. Uh, and now in this video, we learned about, uh, we saw some questions, practical questions. The first question was simple angle chasing. Uh, you should always, always uh, notice, don't miss cyclic quadrilaterals because they are really essential to help you do angle chasing. In the next question, uh, question number two, we literally just did like angle chasing and we just uh, here uh, uh, just said that we should always uh, not do uh, or not fall in the trap of doing a circular proof. You should always uh, keep your uh, line dotted in order not to uh, do that mistake. Here, of course, when like when we did it, we already have deleted point O, so no problem there. Uh, so again, here we just got a cyclic quadrilateral in problem uh, three, the shortest one. We simply did the angle chasing using everything we have learned before in the first video. Uh, and we immediately noticed that these two guys are C, so that gives us a cyclic quadrilateral, and automatically this kills the problem. So again, cyclic quadrilaterals are very important in angle chasing. Uh, next, in this Canadian question, uh, we saw that we had a very weird condition that we could not have done anything with. So we thought about the idea of construction. We need to construct something in order to to make this condition more appealing, uh, like so that we are able to work with. Uh, the basic idea was uh, put the two angles as opposite angles to make to have a cyclic quadrilateral. Indeed, this is what we did, and we immediately killed the question with some simple angle chasing. Uh, finally, we solved the IMO problem one, of the nineteen eighty-five, uh, and the idea was uh, also uh, like a standard construction. How exactly are we going to do showing uh, AD plus BC is equal to AB? Uh, we just put a point, introduce a point T that like sets phi one, and we just show the other. Uh, we basically analyzed point T, and we figured out that it lies on the circle, circumcircle of CDO. So again, uh, here in the last two questions that we solved, the construction was, the main point of construction was to make your life easier, to make the conditions easier, to make what you want to prove here uh, easier. This was our uh, like uh, goal behind uh, these constructions. All right, my dear friends. So uh, like that's it for the first chapter, angle chasing. Uh, in the next video, we'll be introducing the theory, the th theoretical part of the uh, circles, like chapter two. And of course, we'll be following the same pattern, uh, solving practice questions and so on, till hopefully we finish the whole book. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, please uh, share it with your friends. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and join the Discord uh, as well. And see you guys in the next video.